and thank you for joining us here on BNC Live. I'm Brittany Jones. We are following breaking news this evening. The House Budget Committee has passed a $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill and it's now headed to the House floor. Now, the committee held a rare Saturday meeting today to vote on advancing the proposed package. The final tally was 20 to 17 with all Republicans and Democratic Representative Scott Peters voting against the bill. This vote was needed for the bill to move forward and gather possible amendments. Some moderates worry a few of the measures go too far, but progressives say they've already compromised enough and want the bill passed. Well, a public memorial service has been set for Gabby Petito Sunday in Long Island, New York. The 22 year old vanished in August while on a cross country trip with her fiance, Brian Laundry. Her body was found Sunday and authorities have ruled her death a homicide and while Petito's the Petitos prepared to say goodbye. The family of Jelani Day is now preparing to do the same. The missing graduate student's body was found on Thursday in an Illinois River. Jelani was reported missing last month. Now, Jelani Day was 25 years old and wanted to become a speech pathologist. BNC's Janine Donaldson spoke with Jelani's mom, who has been critical of police, saying there was no urgency in his case. For 25 years, Carmen Bolden Day loved very emotional. Your heart just breaks for her. Well, police say recent national public exposure may have helped them find Jelani's body. As Adrian Brodus reports, missing persons cases often are treated very differently in the public eye, depending on the race of the missing person. Jean Benet Ramsey. The disappearance of Madeline McCann. Nellie Holloway vanished in Aruba. Murdered or missing. I just call in and just leave a tip. We grieve every day because we don't know where she is or what's going on. And our prayers continue to go out to all of those families. Stay with us. Much more BNC Live after this short break. to news in the Caribbean. Haiti's Prime Minister Ariel Henry says he vows to find all of the perpetrators behind the assassination of former Haitian President Jovenel Moise. President Moise was shot dead after gunmen stormed his home in Port-au-Prince in July. The Prime Minister says his assassination will not remain unpunished. Yeah. Nothing. Absolutely, Absolutely nothing. nothing. No political maneuver. No media yeah. campaign. No distraction can deter me from this goal to bring justice for President Moïse. It is a duty to his memory, a duty to his family, and a duty to the Haitian people. The criminal investigation underway is a difficult one. It was a transnational crime, and because of this, we are formally requesting mutual legal assistance. This is a priority of my government for the entire nation. Hundreds of Haitians who were seeking refuge in the U.S. have been sent back home. For weeks, Haitians have been trying to escape economic, political, and social chaos in their homeland since the death of their president. Thousands of them are still on a move in Central America and Mexico in the hope they may find a better life in the U.S. And more than 12,000 migrants will have a chance to make their case for asylum before the U.S. immigration judges, while an estimated 8,000 voluntarily returned to Mexico and another 2,000 and were expelled to Haiti. The fate of others detained is still pending. The disconnect between American ideals and the United States immigration policy is not new. Now, the U.S. and Haiti have shared problems since the first days of freedom. BNC's Nayar Huck walks us through Haiti's troubled history. From George Washington to Joe Biden, American presidents have a sordid history with the country of Haiti. Haiti paid a heavy price. <laughs> BNC Live. R. Kelly's fate is now in the hands of the jury after weeks of grueling testimony in his sexual misconduct trial. The 54-year-old is accused of running a Chicago-based criminal enterprise that recruited his young accusers for unwanted sex and mental torment. He has denied all wrongdoing. BNC Stephanie Bertini has more. 54-year-old Robert Kelly spent decades in the 
And that was BNC's Stephanie Bertini reporting. Well, this weekend marks the fifth anniversary of the opening of the National African American History Museum in our nation's capital. As BNC's Candace Cole reports, visitors will have a new art exhibit to explore tackling issues of police brutality in the black community, amongst others. The National Museum. Welcome back and welcome to fall, y'all. As the season changes, sometimes so does your mood. But it's crucial to remember self-care is important for your mental health all throughout the year. This self-care Saturday, our mental health and wellness expert, Jane Marks, has some tips for fall self-care. Our mental health and wellness expert, Jane March, joining me now for Self Care Saturday. Self Care Saturday, we love it. The weather is changing. It mm. feels good going outside, you know. Mm. Fall is a special time of year. It is, and Jane, it's been actually very, very beautiful. Like the last mm -hmm. few days, it has given us the feeling of fall. It makes me feel a little bit happier. So talk about that. I mean, obviously, there is a difference between switching into seasons. Not only is our mood changing, or not only is the season changing, but our mood changes during the season. Um, what is the difference between the activities you do when it's just a regular summer season and going into fall? Well, you know, to me, fall is the beginning of a new season of renewal. Mm -hmm. You know, we participate in so many seasonal activities. Like, for example, we go outside more because the weather is nicer. You know, we're we're out in nature. We're, you know, in orchards. We're doing those things that you don't typically do in the summertime. We're taking hikes. We are physically, you know, again, we're communing with nature. We're paying attention to the colors. You know, people travel all over the country during the fall because it mo it boosts their moods. It makes them feel like, you know, this is a time where I can begin anew. I can declutter. I can organize my space. The interesting thing, there's, there's some interesting research, Brittany, about how activities that we've been in the fall are more likely to extend during the year than even those that we do in January. Wow. So when we talk about fall as being the season for renewal, it's right on. Yeah. And so talk about you know the fact that what we can do instead I mean you mentioned this earlier even the food is different even the drinks are different but they all meant to give you some type of boost in a different way mentally that's true. You yeah. know, when it, when you talk about the, the activities and the, and the decisions we make, you know, think about it. You know, these big operations know what they're doing when they bring out, they haul out the pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Well, pumpkin, as we know from research, raises serotonin. You know, and cinnamon, there's a lot of cinnamon in all the dishes. And cinnamon, again, it stabilizes blood sugar. And all these fall vegetables, squash, we know that squash has a lot to do with managing stress. So we're eating seasonal foods that are also going to affect how we feel. We're mm -hmm participating in activities that are going to affect how we feel, and we're also connecting with people. Think about this. In the fall, we have all these special events. We've got Halloween. Yep. We connect with people. We've got Thanksgiving. What a connection. And so it is a shift. It is In the summertime, we have fun. We're outside. We're laughing. We have a different kind of connecting in the fall. And again, it is those experiences, those, tra those traditions that we look forward to. We, yeah. You know, again, it's part of our history. And so fall is a pretty special season, not only for adults, but for children as well. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned squash. I'm not a big squash fan, but I will eat it. But it sounds like I need to eat a lot of it to get rid of the stress. <laughs> <laughs> As Lord knows what my week has been like. But Jane, you know, when you look at all of these things, um, finding different ways to like help you manage the stress, getting your mental health on track, how emphasize the importance of actually doing self-care year-round? Because it, it, there are different seasons for different things, but why is it so important that we do that? Well, you know, and, and self-care looks differently each season. You know, just as you were talking about in the summer, you're going to be active outside, but you know, at the beach, those kinds of things. But in the fall, you, you take a different course. And you need to take a different course because in the fall, we're going to be spending more time inside the house. Yes, we're going to start doing some outside activities, but we're preparing for winter. We're preparing mm -hmm. also for those seasonal illnesses that come along. So self-care becomes critical as far as physical health. Mental health as well, you know, those are the times that we spend time, you know, think about this being hunkered in the house, creating a space to relax, to come down off the weeks. And you know what? When businesses, by and large, when they're making their goals, you know, you think of it typically being in July. Mm -hmm. It's in the fall when these businesses, they establish these really tight goals. And, you know, their expectation is that you true. get in there and you participate, you give it 150%. So by the time weekends hit, really have to consider and really be focused on, on self-care. Yeah, that is very interesting. You you mentioned that. So that means a lot of people obviously get stressed Absolutely. around that time trying to meet different budgets mm -hmm. and all of those things. 
And there are things you can do, though. You know, for example, there are things that you can do that you wouldn't normally do in the summertime because you want to be outside of the beach. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can re reorganize your home space. You can declutter. You can make different kinds of plans. And as, as I said, interestingly, you're likely to execute them in the fall as opposed to the summertime because there are many many more distractions in the summertime mm -hmm. as opposed to the fall so it's a time for us to concentrate focus be very mindful of self-care and not only that get it done this time mm -hmm. so a mental reboot mm -hmm. well Jane what is your self-care tip for the week well you know my self-care tip for the week Brittany I think would be you know, create a cozy space so that when you do have a retreat, mm -hmm. you know, you've got your pillows, you've got your warm butternut squash soup, mm -hmm. you've got your candles, you know, because there's scents like lavender and jasmine, which we typically, you know, you know, we're able to access so easily in, in the fall. We can create these spaces so that when we take that, t that downtime, which we need for so many reasons, yeah. our space is there. It's our go-to space for the fall. Create that comfy space. I love it. All right, I'm gonna go home and do that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jane, our mental health and wellness expert. I always appreciate you. I always love coming. <laughs> Fame Cooperstown in 2001. The great Dave Winfield is our BNC king of the hill. Now, this is why people say you should play baseball. <laughs> Must be nice. You know, you can play baseball mm -hmm. for a long time. You know, some guys play 20 years. Mm -hmm. I guess that's why they say you should play baseball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I think about it because it's like traditionally, you know, uh, a lot of our black athletes tend to go more towards football, which is mm -hmm. great. I love football mm -hmm. um, and basketball, but like sometimes they don't get to really highlight the other sports out there that we made such a mark as he did. Definitely, uh, there's an old adage in the NFL, not for long because of the knees and the pounding mm. that your body takes on every play, every whistle, there is a collision. Mm -hmm. It's so challenging to play on Sundays. Yep, most people I know have those problems with their knees. You bet. Include me, I ain't play football, but now for some reason these things don't want to work. <laughs> All right, James, <laughs> stay with us much more BSC Live after this break. <laughs> towards hump day. I guess it's when we start seeing the people with the, the whole, you put on like shorts, you like summer on the bottom and winter at the top <laughs> and you put on a jacket or a sweater, like people like that look. Yes, it's the layer look. I remember the layers, the undie shirts and the shirt on top of the shirts with mm -hmm. the jacket or the sweater. It's just that peel, peel off, off time. Yep, yes, it definitely is. All right, Britt. Well, two of the tel television's biggest stars who went to HBCUs are now giving back. It's part of an effort to inspire future business leaders. The initiative is being sponsored by a candy company hoping to spread the sweet taste of success. In an effort to promote black excellence, some of today's brightest stars are showing their support now for future business investors later. So I got to tell you all about the Recognize the Chew. I, I, I can't wait for this program. It's called Recognize the Chew, which stands for champion, hustle, empower, and win. A mantra they plan to pass along to the students in attendance. But it's really just sharing that journey and recognizing that, you know, success is about continuing to keep going. It's about learning from every lesson and applying it to everything moving forward. So I'm really excited to just be present, to um, give the students the opportunity to ask questions and to just share my life's work and life journey with them. Partnering with Now and Later Candy, the HBCU alums will host virtual seminar classes at Clark Atlanta and Howard Universities to focus on the art of hustle across various industries. For me, hustling has always been a, a key ingredient to my career. You know, from uh, my days of hosting television shows uh, to now my, my career in film and TV, producing, um, philanthropy, businesses, uh, all of that. All of that for me is, is the hustle, right? It's the grind. It's waking up every day and going after your goals, uh, accomplishing your dreams, uh, uh, going after your aspirations. That's what the hustle is all about. In addition to virtual seminars, each school will also receive a $10,000 donation to create a scholarship fund for participating students. It's been hard for a lot of people, specifically financially, 
and whatever we can do to help, you know, lift the burden um, on people who are just trying to better themselves and get an education, I'm excited to be a part of it. I can't wait to see how this grows. This is just the inaugural inaugural year of this. And so we have many, many years to come to continue to, to, to build up this pot and continue to help positively empower and inspire generations to come. Another topic both stars are promoting is the value of an HBCU education. These schools, we're pumping out incredible leaders uh, that are the backbone of, of the black community and the backbone of our, of our, our country. It's a moment in time that you never have to wonder um, if you're being treated differently because of the color of your skin. You know, at a lot of schools, they say a freshman year, you know, look to your right, look to your left. This person will not, you know, be graduating with you. But I, for one, know at Spelman College, they say, look to your right, and you need to ensure that your sister is walking across the stage with you. So it's a very different mentality in terms of creating an environment that is rooting for your success. Rooting for success while changing lives, one hustle at a time. Brittany Jones for BNC. Yeah, such a great story, obviously, being able to see them um, do these things and make sure HBC, HBCU kids get the same support. Yes, and I love your pronunciation of now and later, because mm -hmm. I know sometimes I say now, later. Yeah, now, later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that does it for this hour of BNC Live. We'll stick around. Much more weather, news, and sports coming your way. Our BNC, King of the Hill. So good that everybody wanted them, NFL, MLB, all of that. Must be nice. You know, you talk about a baseball star, a basketball player uh, across the board. Even the uh, Vikings wanted his services, and they were right down the street. So the phone rang, and they said, hey, come on down. Mm -hmm. Anything that you remember um, from his career, James, That because you, you oftentimes have these personal stories that you get to see with these guys. All right, here's a different story. So back in the day when I lived in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. I'm on Sepulveda near the 405 over by the airport. I pull in in my old car, and <laughs> I look, and there is a, uh, a, a really nice Jag, and there's a tall gentleman. It's Dave Winfield. Mm -hmm. And so we have a, a, a short conversation. Nobody else is around. We're there to pump nice. our gas and maybe get a few snacks and drive off. We talked a little bit, and then he said, okay, well, nice to see you. I got to go. He jumps in his car, drives off, and disappears into the L.A. sunlight, mm -hmm. and it was like it never happened. And I'm, I'm standing there like, wow, that was Dave Winfield. Wow. Hopefully you ain't talking to Dave, Dave. <laughs> All right. That's, <laughs> we'll be right back with more news after this. <laughs> at those hotter temperatures I know we're in fall but it just reminds me for some reason there I don't know if you saw that meme that said all of the black girls about to muster us to death <laughs> did you see that <laughs> Like putting on the colors and all this stuff just goes with the season. Yes, I had on a brown for the first day of fall, so mm -hmm. caramel, so I feel like burgundy, mustard, mustard. Uh -huh. and all of those colors, you're definitely going to see it. Yes. Me, I don't know. I was still feeling the it's summer. Feeling summer. It's okay. It's even back up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, real quick. If you're a Mexican foodie, I'm sure you're loving today. It's National Quesadilla Day. We'll hit it real quick. The day encourages us all to grab some authentic Mexican food. Quesadillas are not only eaten to satisfy a snack craving, but also to complete a meal. So, you like quesadillas? I did have a quesadilla today and I thought it was an original idea, but apparently not. Oh, you ate one today? <laughs> I went to both Ooh. and I totally forgot. But she didn't share y'all. All right, we're going to address that when we come back. We'll see you back here in a couple of minutes. <laughs> for fall, Britt. It is, and I got a little bit of cool myself, and I wanted some hot chocolate. Oh, hot chocolate. Oh, you, you're just skipping ahead. That's like December. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know. You get into it. I think you and I talk about not really feeling like the pumpkin mm -hmm. stuff. No. No, mm -hmm. you don't really feel it. I like the pumpkin flavor. You do? Yeah. So the pumpkin spice, so you would do it, you do the drinks, the coffee? Yeah, like around that time, not the coffee, but like okay. uh, a regular latte without all of the espresso and all that good mm -hmm. stuff in it, but I like the flavor. Okay, maybe I should try it, you know, with my adult taste buds. Maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> all 
All right, Britt, so fans are waiting to find out what celebrities will be the next participants in the Versus battle. We know we love those. Singer and songwriter Omarion recently spoke on the Big Tigger morning show about... Mm -hmm. You know, who would he want to go against? A perfect opponent. Well, when one of the morning show hosts gave a few potential matchups, Omarion responded to Chris Brown's name saying that would be dope. The R&B star only seemed to be interested in going up against fellow singer Chris Brown if the opportunity arose. Will it go down or will it not? No, so far, no official uh, matchup has been announced. So what do you think about this, Brittany? I think we already know Chris <laughs> Brown would take it. I mean, I saw, you know, Marion in concert, but mm -hmm. we already know. Yeah, Omarion's great, great dancer. I think um, yep. who would be more of Omarion's speed? I can't even think right now because he started out young in B2K. True. So if you bring those songs in mixed with um, like the O, like, I don't know what else. I know. I don't know who would be perfect to go to. Oh, somebody saying Marcus Houston. Okay, that's his bro that's his brother, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that that would be a good yeah because they had immature and then he did his solo thing. I think that's a good matchup. But I don't even know if he would go against that. I, I don't know. <laughs> I think, but we know Chris Brown. I just yeah, like, I want to see Usher and Chris Brown. That's ooh, what I want to see. Yes, I would love that too. All right, that does it for us here tonight. But we'll see you back here tomorrow at seven. Have a great night. <laughs> I would love to see Usher. Yeah, Usher and Chris yeah. Brown.